Well, hello. I wasn't expecting you this early. Well, welcome to Steps to Success. My name is, well, it really doesn't matter what my name is, but today let's discuss what Cardano, the blockchain is. See, Cardano is a third generation blockchain. In order to understand fully what Cardano is, being a third generation blockchain, we have to go back two generations for the first generation blockchain, which is Bitcoin. See, everything as far as the digital currency started with Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is now commonly referred to as digital gold. This is because Bitcoin really doesn't have much utilization in the real world or on their actual blockchain. It's mostly a store of value and it's protected by the blockchain itself. So it's also referred to as digital gold because it's deflationary. So there's only 21 million Bitcoin that can ever be mined. So this is Bitcoin, right? Pretty straightforward. You just hold Bitcoin most of the time and that's really what you do with Bitcoin. Now things get a little more interesting fast forward a few years later back in 2015 when ethereum was created which is a second generation blockchain so ethereum allowed smart contracts on their platform so in addition to the security provided by the blockchain they also provided smart contracts these smart contracts allowed users or anyone who's looking to create on the platform it allowed them the space to create what's called dApps now these dApps have they range from anything from D finance services also to games that you can play on the platform itself. Now, the only main issue with Ethereum is that once it was actually formed in 2015 and you know launched in 2015, the creators, Vitalik Buterin and a few other people, they did not keep in mind that it could actually scale so fast. So they didn't understand that it could scale so fast. So when Ethereum was first created, it can only as of now do about five to seven transactions per second and this means that the gas fees or the price to exchange ethereum is really high so in order to take ethereum from this place to this place you have to pay about 10 to 60 dollars and that's not very feasible right so this is the biggest issue when it comes to ethereum now they're actually working on this with ethereum 2.0 but that is still in the process and it could be released later this year or early 2023 now things do get more interesting when we go to third generation which is cardano now cardano was founded by the co-founder of ethereum charles hoskinson so this guy charles hoskinson him and vitalik buterin and another guy named jeremy wood they had a disagreement so upon creating the actual system the actual um, blockchain of ethereum they had a disagreement as far as what the entity should be. So whether it should be a nonprofit or a for-profit entity. Charles Hoskinson believed that uh, the blockchain Ethereum should be a for-profit while Vitalik Buterin wanted to keep it nonprofit. A guy named Jeremy Wood linked up with Charles Hoskinson and they got together and formed a company which now is known as IHOK, which is, has something to do with Hong Kong. <laughs> but this IHOK company, they their main project is Cardano, right? So they're a for-profit company and their main project is Cardano. So IHOK is the head of Cardano, basically. That's what makes Cardano. So now here we are in 2017 was when Cardano was actually released. Now, what sets Cardano apart from the previous two blockchains, the previous two generations, is in addition to it being a for-profit entity, they also started off as a proof-of-stake program which means that it validates its transactions based on the actual users on how many coins the users hold. It's probably worth mentioning that the coin for Cardano is called ADA and it's named after ADA Lance, which is known to be like the first computer programmer in the world, right? So with Cardano validating their transactions on a proof of stake program, this will require and or lead to them being able to be more scalable. Cardano's main focus is that the more transactions that occur on the program, the more scalable it should become. This contrasts with Ethereum. Again, there's a bottleneck with Ethereum. The more transactions, the more money that you have to pay to actually make an exchange of Ethereum. And to go back to the first generation, when it comes to Bitcoin, they're on what's called a proof of work system which means that you have to do what's called mining. And this mining is basically solving complex math problems to actually mine the Bitcoin. In addition, there is 21 million Bitcoin that can ever be created. But with Cardano, there's 45 billion Cardano that will ever be mined, you know, 
and definitely beyond our existence but this means that it is deflation deflationary as well which means hypothetically over the course of the next you know 5 10 20 years cardano price could rise and possibly even surpass ethereum now an, another good part about the proof of stake system is that it actually requires less energy so when you're doing a proof of work system you have to do like a lot of a big electric mine with a bunch of computers because these computers are working to solve solve the the actual mind math problems which mines the bitcoin itself this takes up a lot of energy and there are concerns about this in the world so with cardano being a proof of stake system there's no energy um, consequences that are very apparent at this time now with cardano being proof of stake deflationary they are also able to do basically everything that ethereum does so they're able to do dApps and they're also able to do nfts as well now the big part that sets cardano apart from ethereum is that as of now their gas fees are way less expensive than ethereum again ethereum is 10 to 60 dollars just to do any type of transaction on their blockchain ada or cardano right now is about 0.16 to 0.17 ada which could you know range anywhere depending on the price of ada but it's still about you know 10 to 20 cents as opposed to it being 10 to 60 dollars that's a major difference so with cardano having lower gas fees and being deflationary they are setting themselves for apart from ethereum however they are in no rush so with charles hoskin the founder of cardano he is a mathematician himself and they the cardano team they prioritize research over development right so over implementing something and seeing how it turns out they actually prefer to research the topic thoroughly and then implement it to see how it turns out so this slows down a bit of the actual progress on the surface right so they're not making major leeway right away as opposed to new crypto projects that are popping up out of nowhere so for me i actually like that it seems like they're more official than you know i can go make a coin today and say that i have the best crypto project literally right maybe we'll do that but my point is with cardano they're actually setting back and doing the research and they would like to include you on the research so you can actually check out cardano's roadmap right so they have a roadmap that sets it apart into five different eras right now i believe we're in like the third or fourth era but whenever this fifth era is complete the idea is that you will have a fully functioning blockchain to its best capability being cardano and that will take the price faithfully to the moon so if you'd like to learn how to purchase cardano go ahead and check out the video up there or click the link in the description where i actually you know purchase hundred dollars worth of ada cardano's coin ada and you guys can learn how to purchase that for yourself but in the meantime now that you know about cardano all you have to do now is get to stepping